Hi, I'm Yukali, and today we're going to talk about how to make your Word documents a little more aesthetic. So we have here a basic Microsoft Word document. I've written the first three pages of a little drabble that I've been working on, and I'm going to make it a little prettier because, you know, plain Word documents are boring. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to focus on what I have. Whenever you start a Word document, these are your basic setups. You have the um, first header, which is normal. You have um, an added space after the paragraph. You'll see here I have a bunch of fonts here. I've downloaded a lot of these fonts, so you probably won't have them. Typically, you start with Calibri 10-point font, and that's your basics. Now, for a document for someone else, you may want to make it a little different, so the first thing I tend to do is to change the margins. Um, I like half margins, half inch margins, because it's enough room to put a hole punch. For stories, I like to have um, landscape style, because I like to put pictures into my stories so that I have a visual reference whenever I'm writing. Um, and I tend to do anywhere from two to three inches on the side, where I can just Put in pictures and have something to focus on whenever I'm writing and know what I'm describing when I'm doing an image scene. Next, I'm going to make sure that my page size is correct. <laughs> if you're in the United States, that means using um, the letter size. If you're elsewhere, it means probably A4. Next, we're going to go into the design tab and pick a style. The reason why you want to do this is because Microsoft Word will automatically make your document quite aesthetic already if you just use this built-in feature. So I tend to start with a built-in style and then I augment it. As you can see, I already have three um, augmented custom styles, so I'm going to use one of those. Um, then I'm going to go over to fonts, and I'm going to change which fonts I'm using. As you can see, I've built a few customs, <laughs> so I'm going to augment one of the customs that I've already built um, to include a font that I've recently discovered um, as my base font for my paragraphs. So I'm just going to go right here and select it. And then just click start, and you're ready to go. Now, you'll see that there's also a color tab. You can change the colors of your document. I have already found one that I really like and I augmented it, so that's the one I'm going to use as custom at the top here. Um, but you can use whichever custom or, or font you want, and it just gives you a different color format, a color palette. Then you want to pick from the various style headers that you can use, and this will change the way your headers look throughout your paper. You can also change your background color. Um, be aware that that changes the color on every page. And you can set up a sort of border around your pages, which some people like. If you want to do a watermark, please be aware that it prints darker than it looks on the page. Next, you're going to go back to the Home tab, and you're going to start point by point editing your document. You want to start picking out which which lines are your title and which ones are your headers. Now for each one that you do this you're going to go to modify and you're going to just slightly shift it. For example I want this to be centered for my title um, and for titles I like to use text um, text effects so I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna click text effects and it's going to give me this window and I'll be able to pick a text effect that I like. This font may not be the one that I want to use. That's okay, I can always change it. You can always change your font whenever you want throughout this process through the modify feature. If you do it through modify, then every time you pick that header type, you can adjust things. See, this font's a little narrow for the text effect that I want, so I'm going to pick a different one. Just go into to the fonts, find one that you like. As you can see, I have a lot of downloaded fonts. You probably won't have all of these. Um, I will link a great source to find downloaded fonts in the um, description box below. It's called 1001 Free Fonts. Please be, keep in mind that if you want to use this source, um, this 1001 Free Fonts, um, you have to buy if you're planning on commercially using your font, if you're planning on using it for like a handout that you're selling or something like that. Um, if you are using it privately and no one's ever going to see it, you can use these fonts for completely for free and it's really easy to download them. Now the text effect that I wanted is going to work, finally. 
So I'll go in here and I'll just make some slight adjustments. You can change all of these little tabs to uh, adjust the way that the style looks each time. There we go, that's much better. Maybe a little big. I might have to reduce that. Um, but at this point, because this is a story, what I like to do is create a cover page. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to set that basically as my author line, and then I'm going to go in and put a picture. I've actually already found a picture that I really like, so I'm going to use that picture. I just need to insert it. There it is. Insert. Ooh, it's a bit big. So I'm going to have to uh, shrink it. Now, what we're going to do at this point is to resize this image. Um, and I like to use this little uh, picture format window to do that because I'm a perfectionist. Um, just as I thought we're going to have to reduce that header, that title, because it was too big. Um, so that we can make the picture a little bit bigger. I want it to fill the screen because I want this to be title screen. But not so much that it kicks the author line off the e drabble line there. Yeah, it looks good. So now, now we have the bulk of the page. Now we have actually going in and editing each chapter. So again, you want to identify your header lines. So highlight them and identify them as headers, and then go in and individually modify each one of these. Remember that the modify feature allows it to be the same every time you click that header, so it always does the same thing. I'm going to make this a little bigger. I'm going to center it um, and change the font color. I like pink. We're probably going to change that later, but pink is cute. Um, it also has a line under it. Um, no, it's a good color, but you can actually change the color of that line, which you'll see later on. I'm going to set that to another font, another header. Change the font in that and make it a little less obscure. Um, there it is. It's my favorite font, Bradley Handwriting. Um, and uh, just change the size there. It's a little thin, I might have to bold that. Mm, yeah, let's go in and bold that. Mm, it has something weird with spacing, so I'm gonna fix that. That's better, it's a little better spaced. Um, now the paragraph font. You have two paragraph fonts, you have normal and then you have no spacing. If you change the normal one, um, then it works better. What I'm doing right here is justifying the um, paragraphs. That makes it so that it lines up on the left side as well as on the right side. I'm also going to change the spacing just a little bit. I'm trying to get it to indent about a quarter of an inch automatically. Okay, here we go. We're going to go right here and just give it a little indent. Um, please be aware this is going to indent everything, all of the headers, which is very, very annoying. But thankfully, you're still at the beginning of this process. You can just go in and modify and just take that setting off of all of the others. Um, something else that you can do is if you look at the ruler on the top of the screen there, um, you'll see the little hourglass figure is broken into two parts. If you just grab the top part of that arrow, that, um, that hourglass and just drag it over, you can create indentations. I just wanted to do it as part of the, um, the style so I didn't have to do that every time that I was creating a new paragraph, which is why I went in and did it through modify. Alright, now as you can see, we're uh, moving around smoothly now. It looks very nice, but it still looks kind of plain. Oh, here's another header we need to identify. Bam. And as you can see, all I had to do is just click it once, and it's set exactly the way the previous head one had. That's the, the benefit of modify. Now what I want to do is insert a table of contents. So I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to kick chapter one onto its own page. You do that by going into layout, and then you go to breaks, and you go to page break, next page. And that means that even if you fill up that white space above it, that white page above it, and you fill it up all the way to where it kicks down, it's chapter one is always going to be on its own page. Now if you go to the reference tab, um, you can just click on the table of contents and it auto generates one for you. Um, if you pick the second one, it will use your headers. It will use the headers that you've already created and it will pick them out and it will define them already in your table of contents. And then if you just make a new header, you just have to go in and update that table of contents and uh, the headers match, which is very, very convenient because you don't have to type them in yourself. Now, let's, um, let's 
let's talk about references for a second because we've got this picture up here that this is a YouTube video so I need to give credit to this artist, this glorious artist. So what I'm going to do is to um, create a citation actually and Microsoft Word, the full version of Microsoft Word actually has a full function for doing this. So you can just um, click insert citation and you can walk through the whole process of, of creating one yourself actually. Just type in the fields that you know, the artist's name, the file, and uh, Microsoft uh, Word has the ability to do this for all kinds of citations, websites, pages, documents, videos, etc. So just click through that, that type um, bar, drop down bar, and it'll show you how to do all of those. Um, and just fill out as much information as you know about the source. There's a little um, click box at the bottom there that um, you can click and it'll tell you which items or fields you really need to know. See, like this. Um, and it gives you little red stars that show you which ones you really need to have for um, academic representation. When you're done, just click on the OK um, and you're ready to go and you have a citation. And it's just a parenthetical is what appears there. Parenthetical citations are not the same as full citations. You do actually have to have full work cited um, in order to have a proper citation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a work cited, but I don't like the, the idea of that being at the end of my documents. I'm going to put it in right here somehow. Hmm, I think I'm going to do that by creating a side panel right here in this big empty space that I'm not using because it's the front page. So I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to go to text box. And there's a lot of these actually that you can pick from. And these are great for notes. I used to use these when I made lecture notes um, for class. I would put in notes like when the next test was, what the homework was, things like that. Um, keywords, that kind of thing. You see these like in textbooks. These are, these are the side panels that you see in textbooks. You can create these yourself in documents. And they're really easy to use. I think I like a long bar style one. So I'm going to pick this one. And of course, he's gonna put it in the wrong place. You have to reposition it, put it in place where you want it, um, and then you can just type into it. If you just click on that text once, it will highlight all of it. So you can just hit delete um, and go in and type what you want to type. Um, I'm going to insert the citation though because I don't want to type it on myself. So I'm gonna to go to references. I'm gonna to go to bibliography and put in a reference page, and it's already done for me. That's why you typed in all that information. Um, oh, I hate all caps. To take away all caps, just go to paragraph, or sorry, go to font, and just click the all caps tab and it'll get rid of it for you. Now I'm just going to change what this says because it says references twice, so I'm going to make the top references that I typed in in the white space bigger. And then in this pink space, pink line space, I'm just going to put image. Hmm, that font's not going to work. I'm going to have to change that font. Let's make this a little smaller. There we go. That's a little more aesthetically pleasing. Okay, let's move on to the next step. What we're going to do now is deal with headers and footers. So for the chapter pages, I'd like for there to be um, page numbers, and I'd like for the chapter name to be along the top of the page. So I'm going to go to insert, and I'm going to go to the header footer section. I like my page numbers being on the bottom of the page. So I'm going to go to page number, bottom of the page, and there's one in particular that I like. All of these are really pretty. Um, there's some that set up so they're different on the odd and end pages, odd and even pages, but there's one in particular that I like for stories because it looks like a little storybook. And I'm just going to go in and adjust this a bit. Um, as you can see, it appears on every single page. You have to take off the, um, the, the setting at the top there to mirror it on every page. Um, and then you just delete it on the pages you don't want. Hmm. It has that indent. I'm going to have to move that indent. Let's try just tabbing it over. Let's see if that works. No, nope, not quite. Mm. Okay, let's center that. Bam. Done. Um, and we should also change the color of that so that it's the same color, blue. And now what you're going to do is you're going to go to the picture format. Um, if you look at it, you can see that it um, it has white all throughout, like right here. But if you set it to white, 
suddenly it has a blue back there. It's just a little detail that I like to put in. What this also does is allow you to put things behind that little picture. So what I'll go do is I'll go to shape, I'll go to rectangle, just draw any rectangle, and just fill the bottom, fill the header with that rectangle. Don't worry, we're gonna we're gonna resituate it. Um, change the coloring or whatnot, however you want it to be. Now we're gonna make it a little transparent. We're gonna click this little out button and we're going to increase the transparency. I like to set it to about 50%. You see, you can see the picture through it now. Um, and then just send it backwards. Just send it to back. And now your little storybook thing is in the front. Nice and easy. Um, and I'm just going to adjust this just a little bit more. Um, and I don't want it to stretch across the whole page because then it looks off-centered and weird. So I'm going to pull it in. I would like it to line up with my page, my, my paragraph margins. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that grid appear. I'm going to go to align, and at the bottom of it there is a grid setting. So you can make the grid appear, and then you can um, force anything to fit to that grid, which is nice and easy, and then you just make the grid go away again. Bam. Now it looks all nice and neat, and it's lined up to the paragraph end. Um, which is very satisfying. Now, um, as you can see, this is centered, and you can see this ruler along the top of my bar. If you don't have that, just go to View and just activate your ruler, and then you can have it, and that's really helpful for making sure that things are actually centered um, on your document if you didn't know how to um, how to set that up. I'm just adjusting this, this um, color real quick to make sure that it contrasts nicely whenever I exit the footer, because when you're in the footer, things are darker than when you exit the footer, then they tend to get a little lighter. Um, just a little something to be aware of, and the same goes for the header. Ooh, I've been using blue and all my fonts are in pink, so I'm going to go into modify and I'm going to one by one change the ones that are pink to blue so that the whole document matches um, a little better. I think I'll probably leave the title page so that it's a little different just because um, but all the others I think I'm gonna go in and change them all to blue so that they are properly set um, as you can see I just changed that line color as well which is something that you can do for anything um, that you want to have that line with there we go that's better all right um, yeah, I'm gonna leave that purple up there. That's fine. It's it's not bothering anyone. Ooh, but that image is, needs to be lighter color, so we're gonna turn that white so that it stands out. There we go. Nice and neat. Okay, hmm. What else do we need to do to make this document nice? Let's do our header. So we're gonna click into the header and make sure it doesn't copy from the previous. Um, have a different first page and go to next. That way the, the page that has chapter 1 on it is a different um, header than the next page and all the pages after that within chapter 1, within that section. So now I'm going to go to field, um, sorry, go to header, and find a base that I like. I really like that pink line one. Yeah, we're gonna go, maybe, yeah. Yeah, I think we're gonna go with that one. So put that in, um, and then I'll just change the color pink to blue. As you can see, this actually created a table, which is rather interesting. And you can see on the ruler, there's only two columns on this table. Um, because there's, you can see on the ruler that it's divided that way. I'm gonna get rid of that little title thing, because I don't want the title to be there, I want the chapter title to be there. And I'm going to insert um, in the header right there, I'm gonna go to field. Um, and I'm going to type in style, just start typing it in and you'll find it, style ref, and then just go to header one and it'll automatically generate that from the chapter title and you can do that at any time and you can actually alter that at any time and it will copy it as you go um, so that you can have that there. And then for that second box, I want a picture, a little tiny picture and something great about Microsoft Word is that it actually has a little um, icon set. So I'm going to insert an icon right there. I'm going to go to the insert tab and click icon and find one that I like. This is a titanic drabble. It's 
it's about Titanic, so I'm going to type in iceberg in the search box and see if there's an iceberg. But there's all these different pictures. There's a lot of them. They're all really cute. I use these all the time. Um, and you can insert these anywhere in your document, but I like to have them in the header. Um, and sometimes I like to set it so that each chapter has its own different little box. Um, I could shrink it myself, but I kind of like the idea of it being off. So I'm going to um, set it up so it's in front of the text, so I can move it around and put it wherever I want it to be. And I want it to be like the blue is kind of the background, like the horizon line. Um, hmm. But then it intersects with the text, so I'm going to put in another row of that table. Oh, but then it's too big, of course, naturally. So I'm going to actually just shrink that table line. I'm going to turn it white and I'm just going to shrink it and make it smaller by, um, by shrinking the text font size. So I just drop, 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 drop until it's the right size that I want. And then bam, I've got this cute little picture. It looks like an iceberg on a horizon as the header of all of my pages and it's super cute. Um, I am just going to change the color of it though because I don't like black. Let's make it a dark blue darker blue. There we go. That's nice. Yeah. We're gonna go with that. Um, the chapter name color I think it needs to change now. Yeah. Let's change that. Make it a little darker. Make that a little darker. There we go. Very nice. And now you have this really, really cute header at the top of each page after page one in this chapter. And then for the next chapter, I can change it. I can make it look different for each chapter um, because that's how the header sections work. I've got this big white space here for images, which is really helpful, like I said before, for putting in reference pictures, um, especially if I'm describing a character. I can put in a reference picture of like my dream cast of who they would be or the clothes that they're wearing to describe like a beautiful dress. I've got the chapter name here, which will auto replicate each time that I have a different chapter. Um, sometimes I like to set it so that the date is in there because as you can see I use dates in my right. Alright, the last thing to do is for me to just go in and set up chapter 2 setup. Um, now that we've got the we've got the cover page, we've got the table of contents, we've got chapter 1. Um, I haven't written chapter 2, obviously, I haven't even finished chapter 1, but I'm going to go in here and set up chapter 2 and this is really, really easy to do because all you have to do is go to the layout, put it on the next page, and then set it to the right header. And that's it, and it's ready to go, and you've already done all the hard work. Um, so from this point forward, building your document is much easier, and you don't have to mess around with a bunch of stuff. Um, when you hit enter from that, automatically it just goes straight to normal, which is the first format, which is why you wanted to fix that one, rather than doing the no spacing one. Um, set up my date, I've got the header, as you can see the header is different. Um, and it's already set to different first page, but you do want to un enable or disable rather the link to previous section box so that it is different, um, so that it doesn't copy the, the chapter one setup. Or what you can do is have it copy the chapter one setup and then just alter it afterwards. So once it populates that, you can go in and just remove that and, um, and change it for chapter two. And then you're ready to go and you're, you're good. Alright, I think that's about it. Um, I've covered a lot in this, so I think that's most of what people use whenever they're making an aesthetic document. You can use these skills to make all kinds of aesthetic documents. You can make aesthetic, um, like handout, handout forms. I've done this for lecture notes before. All kinds of things. All kinds of things. Um, so, you know, this is not restricted to writers, it's just, you know, my channel's a writing channel, so that's why, <laughs> that's why I did this with a story rather than doing this with a set of, like, class notes or something like that. But I particularly love to do this with class notes, um, because I can set it so that rather than having different chapters, I have different dates, and my class notes are really pretty. If your class notes are pretty, you're more likely to study them. Um, I think that's about it. So, I might... I might make some more slight adjustments to this as I go, but uh, this document's ready to go. Thank you for joining me for this slightly long video. If you like the content on my channel, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you. Have a nice day.